Sunday ocean over the clouds and around the world. Here comes the wild side of wildlife. The animal show. And now let's have a wild welcome for your furry friends. Stinky and Jake. Now it's the animal show. <laughs> Uh, uh, hello, all you little animals out there. I'm Stinky. And I'm Jake. And today our guests are two of nature's most ferocious animals. Arr, who is it? The lion and the tiger? Nope. Our guests today are the grasshopper mouse and the stoat. Of course, the Arr. grasshopper mouse. What? A mouse and a stoat? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jake, you had me go in there. No, no, it's true, Stinky. The grasshopper mouse and the stoat are two of the toughest animals anywhere. Do you believe this, Bear? <laughs> well, you'll all see for yourselves right after this. And now it's time for... That's amazing! And today, we're going to look at the most ferocious baby in nature. Uh Hey, that'd be my nephew, Teensy Hawk. What? Yeah, when F. Ledson gets his claws around your leg, he does not let go. No, Armstrong, it's not your nephew. It's the dragonfly lava. Uh, you mean that big thing there? Oh, that's right. When a dragonfly is still developing in its lava stage, it lives beneath the water. Hey, that's a good idea. It never has to take a bath. It's also the perfect place for this ferocious little creature to catch a meal, like worms, crustaceans, tadpoles, or that little stickleback fish. Huh. The ferocious dragonfly lava. Another animal that scares my nephew Teensy and will make you say... <gasps> That's amazing! And now, Stinky, you'll see just how ferocious little animals can be as we meet our first guest. From the western states of America and from Mexico... Mexico! Here's Galahad, the grasshopper mouse. What it is is a skunk who says I'm not tough. Oh, yeah? I'll show you tough. You the wise guy, skunk? Uh, no, no, I'm Jake, the nice guy polar bear. Uh, this is Stinky, the wise guy skunk. <laughs> so I, uh, I hear you think I'm not ferocious. Da, 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 did I say that? <laughs> I don't remember saying that. Good, because if you want to see ferocious, kid, just watch a grasshopper mouse in action. Oh. oh. Yeah, oh. here's my home, the desert. A tough place to live, but we grasshopper mice are tough enough to take it, see? Well, now, it, it can get up to 150 degrees there. How do you handle the heat? We're nocturnal, Jake. That means we hunt at night when it's cooler. I always say, if you can't stand the heat, stay out of the desert. <laughs> you really have a way with words. Thanks, kid. Now, you can see here we have excellent whiskers that help us to find our way in the dark. And a nice big ear so we can hear what's coming or what's trying to get away. Uh-huh. Oh, nice paws. Thank you. They're big for a mouse our size, which makes it a lot easier to run through the sand. Well, hey, what's this mouse digging for? He's digging a burrow, see? Grasshopper mice live and sleep underground. So do skunks. Smart move, kid. Our burrow is where we spend the hot desert days. It's where our babies are born and where they stay until they're ready to go hunting by themselves. Excuse me, I have to listen to this next part coming up here. Ain't that beautiful? Oh, it sure is. Well, how come you're called a grasshopper mouse? Do you hop like a grasshopper? Nah, they call us that because we love to eat grasshoppers. But we also eat beetles, centipedes, and, uh, oh, my personal favorite, scorpions. Scorpions? But scorpions can be very dangerous. Don't they have a deadly stinger on their tail? Sure they do. But we grasshopper mice have evolved so that we're almost immune to their sting. Well, what does immune mean? It just means their poison doesn't kill us. So their best weapon just isn't as effective against a grasshopper mouse. Well, now, what is this mouse doing? That's a classic scorpion attack plan. You see, the first thing you do is bite off the tail. Once you do that, the scorpion is defenseless. Mm. Well, who's that? That is called a darkling beetle. Well, after battling a scorpion, it must be pretty easy to catch a little beetle like that. Yes, but he has an extra hard shell and sprays a foul-smelling, bitter-tasting spray. And that is a centipede. He may not look like much, but when those legs start kicking and he starts biting, a centipede like this can put up quite a fight. I'll show you what happens. Now, what's that mouse trying to do? He's going for the head. You gotta bite the centipede before the centipede bites you. More words to live by. Oh, careful. Oh, hey, Don't hurt each other. Break Grab up, his fellas. head, rip it off. Well, looks like this mouse has won the fight. Well, of course. I told you we were tough. Uh, well, now, is there any animal that the grasshopper mouse is afraid of? Afraid? Never. But sometimes we do pick fights with animals it would be better to avoid. Like who? 
like this tarantula. Yikes! Yikes is right. Now, tarantulas won't bother you unless you bother them first. But then they'll fight you with everything they've got, including that venom. Venom? That's poison! That's right. Tarantula venom won't kill a grasshopper mouse, but it's more than enough to knock him out cold. Oh, don't look now, but I think there's a rattlesnake staring at us. That it is. Well, don't tell me a grasshopper mouse will go after a rattlesnake, too. We're tough, Jake, but we're not stupid. A rattlesnake like this could snap a mouse up in two seconds flat. No, this grasshopper mouse just wants to make sure that's a real rattlesnake. Yep, looks real enough to me. Better get out of there, fella. No matter how tough you are, you don't survive in the wild unless you know when to fight and when to run. And right now, it's time for me to run. Oh, oh well, thanks, Galahad. Yeah. See you around the desert, kid. I'm out of here. <laughs> Bye. Wow. <laughs> it's hard to believe they'll grow up to be ferocious like Galahad. Well, every animal has a tough side. Sometimes it's their tail. Oh, like mine. Yeah, and sometimes it's their teeth. Take a look. Oh. Jake, the grasshopper mouse is a ferocious animal. Ah, but they also have a gentle side, and it's coming up next on <gasps> Baby, Baby Talk. Talk. I can't see a thing. Where are we? What are we? Anyone got a clue? I don't know about any of you guys, but I've got a tail. See? No, we can't see a thing. Hello, children. I've just eaten my weight in food, so now I'm ready to feed you. Come on, everyone. Gather round. That's right. Over here. If we eat, will we be able to see? Will we get fur? Somebody please tell me what we are. You're baby grasshopper mice, and if you eat your food, you'll grow into big grasshopper mice like me. Do I have everyone? Grasshopper mice? Cool. Who would have guessed? Come on, everyone. No shilly-shallying. It's time to eat up and grow up. You've got to be out of here in 20 days. And that goes for you, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm drinking as fast as I can, Mama. Am I growing yet? Uh. <laughs> oh, that looks delicious. Yeah, 20 days. I can't wait. <laughs> Those little grasshopper mousy babies were so cute. Yeah. Very hot. I'm Rhonda Rapp, rodent reporter, getting you answers to today's tough questions. Let's see if one of these animals knows the answer. Sir. Yes? Can you tell me which of the stoat's relatives has been domesticated? Is it the pine marten, the fisher, the polecat, or the ferret? Your answer. What stoat? Answer. The relative of the stoat that has been domesticated is the ferret. In fact, the ferret is actually a domesticated polecat. Let's look at the polecat. Polecats live in the forests and woods of Britain and in some parts of Europe. 
The males are called hobs and the females are called jills. Polecats are carnivorous and eat a large range of prey species such as rabbits, small rodents, ew, birds and their eggs, frogs, lizards and snakes. Polecats dig their own burrows between tree roots or rocks. Polecats are mainly nocturnal. They live on the ground and can swim but cannot climb very well. That's all from me, Rhonda Rat reporting on the Polecat. Back to you, Stinky and Jake. Uh, from the temperate and subtropic regions of Europe, North America, and Asia. Asia! <laughs> here is Stella the Stoat. Oh dear, I do hope I'm not late. I don't want to keep Stinky and Jake waiting. Oh, hello, Jake. Uh, hey, hey. Where's Stinky? Well, he, uh, uh, uh... Here I am. Please don't hurt me. <laughs> Why would I do that? Well, we heard that stoats are very ferocious. Oh, that? Well, to tell you the truth, we can be vicious if we have to. <laughs> But by and large, we're very playful animals. Look. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. There's our home. We stoats love to live in the underbrush, usually in an old tree root, a hollow log, or a burrow that we take over from some no-good rodent. Oh, I see. Uh, well, do you usually live in pairs like these two stoats? Yes, that's right, Jake. That way, if we have young stoats, one of us stays behind to care for them while the other goes out and hunts for food. Mm -hmm. Well, you certainly are fast. I mean, you move so quickly and gracefully over the ground, up the trees and everywhere. It's true. We are very quick and good at climbing trees. But don't worry. We would never hurt you unless we felt we were in danger ourselves. Whew. That's good to know. Well, uh, uh, Stella, tell us more about your fur. You're not a fur taker, are you? Because <laughs> if you are, I'm getting tough with you and Junior here. No, 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 fur taker. This, this is our own fur. Yeah, yeah we yeah. were wearing it when we came in. Yeah. Oh, then I beg your pardon. It's just that we stoats are also called ermine. And for years we've been hunted and trapped so that people could wear ermine coats made from lovely fur like this. Well, I was just asking about your fur because I heard that there were white stoats as well as these brown stoats. Oh, yes, but those are actually the same stoats, Jake. You see, like a lot of animals, our coats change color. In the winter we turn white to match the snow. And in the warmer months we're brown stoats to blend in with the trees and leaves. Everything you've told us makes stoats sound nice as can be. Yeah, and we are nice, except when we're hunting. Oh, well, uh, what kind of animals do you hunt for? Oh, frogs, birds, insects, rabbits, and eggs. Eggs? Well, that's perfect. They can't run, they can't hide, and they can't call for help. Oh, but you still have to be careful. If a mother bird comes back and finds this stoat stealing one of her prize eggs, she's going to be very angry. That's why stoats always sneak up on our prey, even when it's an egg. Oh, looks like this stoat has little problems, Del. How's she going to carry that egg out of there? Yeah, Stinky's right. She can't fit it in her mouth, and it would be too dangerous to stay there and eat it. Well, what's she doing now? Oh, it certainly would be too dangerous to eat the egg in the nest. That's why we stoats have learned to roll eggs by pushing them along with our nose. Wow, she's really moving that egg downfield. She's at midfield. She's going for the goal. There she goes. She's going to score. Go, stoat, go! <laughs> yes, and when she gets that egg far enough from the bird's nest, she'll crack the shell open and lick out the egg inside. Oh, it's high in protein and just what a stoat needs to keep our beautiful fur shiny and soft. <laughs> well, I can certainly see why stoats are considered so ferocious. Yeah, especially by eggs. Yes, but remember, we're only ferocious when we're hunting or defending ourselves. You've got that straight. Uh, yes, yes, um, yes, um. Otherwise, we're as sweet as can be. Well, it, it would be sweet of you to sing a song. I thought you'd never ask. Uh, <laughs> and now here's Stella singing the stoat song. hungry and don't need any food as long as I'm not cornered I'll guarantee my mood but if you make me frightened then it's certain you'll get chewed and then I'm bad and sad to say was once described as rude As soon as I'm in 
trouble that trouble maker dies so all is fine and dandy but it pays to just be wise so treat me with respect I get quite nasty for my sides there's do's and don'ts about me so do learn them by rote don't ever tie me down because that's tetherings for a goat and don't get any big ideas to make a fine coat that's the time I draw the line and do show I'm a stoat great song yeah. Stella hey, thank you Stella well stinky I think today's guest proved that you don't have to be big to be a ferocious animal you don't of course not. Why, why even an animal as small as you could be ferocious? I could? Sure you could, but you don't really want to be ferocious, do you? Well, maybe I do and maybe I don't, but nobody's gonna stop me. You got that, Snowball? Snowball? And now it's time for... Animal Awards! Today we find out which is the most deadly spider. Oh. Ooh! <laughs> do we have to? I'm scared of deadly spiders. Then don't look! Oh, good idea. And let's find out if the most deadly spider is the giant tarantula, oh the desert tarantula, I'm not looking, not looking. the black widow spider, oh or the wolf spider. Uh -huh. And the winner is the black widow, whose poisonous bite is 15 times more potent than the bite of a rattlesnake. Uh -huh. You can look now. Okay. The black widow. A very deadly spider and winner of today's Animal Award. <laughs> Stinky, why do you want to be ferocious? Because then I can get what I want when I want it. Well, I want to read a story right now. Well, lucky for you, that's what I want. Uh, and this is when I want it. <laughs> Boy, this tough stuff really works. Uh, <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was a mommy weasel, a daddy weasel, and some baby weasels. Mommy Weasel told the Daddy Weasel to go away while she brought up the Baby Weasels. The Baby Weasels grew very quickly, and as they grew, they got weaselier and hungrier. These babies need more food to eat, thought the Mommy Weasel, as she proudly watched the little weasels gobble up the mouse she'd brought home. Be right back, she said. And before those baby weasels could say, can we come to, she brought them back more meat to eat. And so the babies grew up and they all lived weaselly ever after. The end. Well, that was a pretty good story, Jake. Well, uh, thanks. You know, Stinky, you don't have to be tough around me. I don't? No, just working with you every day is tough enough. Oh, thank you. That... What? <laughs> Wait a minute! Ah, 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 ah. Armchuck, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm being fierce. Oh. Beneath oh. these feathers beats the heart of a ferocious animal. And there is one thing in particular which really gets me going. Ah, oh, yeah? Ah. Yeah, what's that? Uh, uh, guess. Ah. Well, maybe later, Armstrong. It's habitat time. That's it! Ah, ah. You finished? Yeah. So, uh, where are we going? Oh, look! It's the canyons of Arizona. Boy, how could anything live here? It's so canyony. Oh, look! What do you think that is? It looks like a painting of a snake. Oh, oh. <gasps> <It's>, uh, <gasps> Whoa! Uh, and there's the real thing, a rattlesnake. Bunny, let's get out of here before it sees us. Oh, the bunny, not so close. It's seen us. Hey, Armstrong, huh? over here. What? An another snake? No, no, it's a tail. And it belongs to the collard lizard. Really? It looks like a dinosaur to me. What's wrong with you, Armstrong? I, I thought you were ferocious. Well, I am. Just, just watch me take on that leopard lizard. Armstrong, you're backing away. Well... Only because I wanted to see the dinosaur tracks. Oh, wow. Ooh, and uh, what do we have here? A pallid bat. Pallid? 
Yeah, he gotta get out more. Bats usually only come out at night. Not like these hummingbirds. As you can see, they're busy, busy, busy during the day. But at night, it's, it's really cold here. So, to save energy, they go into a very, very deep sleep called torpor. Isn't that interesting, Armstrong? Armstrong? Armstrong! Huh? Huh? Oh, I guess talking about torpor made Armstrong sleepy. Oh, for habitat time, it's Bunny Bear. Sure, I'm sure. Check it out. Oh, just back from the canyons of Arizona. Oh, but you run, run. Oh. oh, yeah. Once again, I'm Wanda Rat, rodent reporter, getting you answers to today's tough questions. Let's see if one of these animals knows the answer. Excuse me, sir. Yes? Can you tell me which of the following animals is a vegetarian? Is it this deep sea fish, the stamia, the gila monster, the lion, or the musk deer? Well, sir, which of those animals do you think eats only plants? Is it the gila monster? I'm sorry, that's wrong! Well, at least I didn't get the trapdoor. What did you say? Trapdoor. Ah! They always fall for that. <laughs> now, the answer. The animal that's a vegetarian is the musk deer. The musk deer lives in Central and Eastern Asia and survives solely by eating vegetation. I'm Wanda Rat reporting on musk deer. Now back to you, Stinky and Jake. Uh, pow, pow, pow. I'm a ferocious little animal. Pow, pow, pow. Right. <laughs> well, that's all the time we have for today. I want to thank today's guests, Galahad the Grasshopper Mouse and Stella the Stoat. Pow, pow, pow. I'm ferocious. I'm ferocious. I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I'm exhausted. Uh, uh, Jake, can I stop being so tough? It's too much work. I want to go back to being my sweet old self. Stinky, I'm happy to have you back. Oh, thank and you. until you come back, remember to keep seeing the world through the eyes of animals. Bye. I'm going to fall down now. You uh,